Hello again. So today we are going to talk about one of the words that I have actually developed, which is about predicting and detecting collisions in smart cars. So basically the idea is that we will have a smart car in the future, the smart car will be driving in the, in the road, and what we want to do is to make sure that the smart car can actually be able to detect a collision. So when a collision happens, it will be able to call the police or to call an ambulance or whoever it needs to call. And second, it will be able to predict the collision. So imagine that something is going to happen in about five seconds and you want to avoid it. So it's good that your car is able to predict it so it can actually try to avoid it. So just to give you a little bit of the of information about the background, you can see that I have Bruce Lee just in my right side. I actually found it very cool. Um, it's part of the hotel where I am and in Seattle now for, for Easter. So I will be just running a few videos from here. So I hope you like them. And yeah, yes, I think it was a very cool feature to have Bruce Lee here. Okay, let's go to the cars. So in my previous video, I was talking a little bit about Carla and about the simulator. So basically we will be doing everything in that environment, okay? So it's important to remember that the environment allows us to create traffic, to put several cars in the road, and we can also put human drivers. So what we are going to do is to simulate what is going to be the so-called transition period. And what is a transition period? So basically imagine that in the future we will have smart cars, but people are not going to say uh, no to driving just immediately. So there will be like a transition period where we have like smart cars, human drivers, and that's basically what we are targeting here to understand what is going to happen in that transition period and mainly to understand it from the perspective of the smart car. So the smart car will be able to, will the smart car be able to deal with human drivers? Will the smart car be able to, to make decisions that protect us? So that's what we are trying to answer in this paper as good as we can. So, as I mentioned, there's a transition period coming and during that transition period there will be human drivers and artificial intelligence drivers. So basically the human drivers are unpredictable. And you know that. If you have been driving, you know that the human driver is unpredictable. Anyone can just crash with your car with no warning or anything. So it's going to be very difficult. It is already very difficult for us to predict what a human driver is going to do. So imagine for a smart car how it will be. So basically what I want to show you is how we try to give an answer to this question. And not only that, we also need to detect the collision that is going to happen. So this is very important, as I mentioned, just to take actions on that. And this is where Carla comes into the playground. So basically Carla is going to be a simulation environment and we will have a smart car there, we will have the human driver there, and we will be collecting data from the sensors. If you remember from the previous video, the sensor has a lot of information that they can provide. So for instance, we can have information of the sensors every single frame. Imagine we have 30 frames per second, so we are going to have like a lot of information. And basically, we are going to use the information of the sensors to feed a machine learning system in order to check whether it's able to predict whether a collision is going to happen or has happened. So again, if you want to see how is the car simulator, you can just have a look to this video when we are just putting traffic into the road. And you can see that we are just generating different cars, different traffic. This was actually basically the whole idea of having the traffic manager controlling the cars inside of Carla. Cool. So then we have all of the components. We have the drivers that are going to be controlled by the autopilot. We have the human driver that is going to be inside. And now what we want to do is to create a machinery to be able to detect and predict these collisions. So for that, what we are going to do is to center ourselves from the perspective of the car. The car will need what is happening around it, it will try to, need to understand the context, it will try to get information from the sensors about other cars, about where, we, where they are, etc. etc. And we are going to compile all this information from Carla. And this is basically our experimental setup. So basically we are going to have a human driver or automatic driver, we are going to be collecting information from the sensors and we are going to have everything running. So basically it's just what you can see here. Just to remind you to make everything a bit more self-contained, what's the information from the sensors that we are able to collect? So basically we can collect information from the LiDAR, cameras, information from the, the position of the car, information for the accelerometer, gyroscope, 
and information about different objects that are around the car and information about the collisions. That actually the last one is the one that we are going to try to predict. So basically this is going to be the one that is going to be our target in the, in the prediction system. We, we are not going to learn from it. We are going to try to learn how to predict it. Because Carla provides that information, but in real life you don't have that information. So now, just to show you a little bit of the data flow, we will have the cars that are going to be providing information to a database. In the database we will be collecting a lot of different information and we will extract some features from the sensors that we will use to feed a machine learning algorithm that will decide whether a collision happened or not. And for five different emergency states, whether a collision is likely to happen or not. And for these five collision, potential collision states, what we are going to have is a time window. So imagine that we have one second to answer, to, to, to react to a potential collision. So basically we will have a window of time second and we will have the, the time second as the, the one second, sorry, as the answer that is needed to be provided. We can also have a longer window, like five seconds, so we will be trying to experiment with this different window size and we will try to understand which window size is more appropriate to distinguish between an emergency situation and a normal situation. Related to the data, we have seven different scenarios where we are going to be running our experiments. We will have 50 cars that are going to be created inside of Carla and they are going to be driven by the traffic manager. So basically, these are going to behave like smart cars. We will have one human driver. So you can imagine that the road is not big enough for having too many human drivers. So we just have one. The simulation will last five minutes. And basically what we will be is collecting information of the sensors every single frame at 30 frames per second. So five minutes, 30 frames per second, multiple sensors, you can imagine that the amount of data is huge. And in this case, we have about six million records from the sensors. Then we need to prepare the machine learning system. So for instance, for detection, we will have a classifier that is going to be a binary classifier. So collision or not collision, this is going to be what we are going to detect. But for prediction, we will have a multi-class classifier with five classes going from no risk to emergency state. It means that nothing is going to happen. We are going to have a collision immediately. So these different states are going to be separated by the window's time. So for example, if the window time is one second, we assume that the risk, the highest risk is a second before the collision and the lowest risk is five seconds before the collision. But we will be playing with this window size having from one to five. Just to make sure that this is actually uh, suitable for different scenarios. And then we just run the experiments. And look what happens here. We have very high accuracy, the one with the highest accuracy is random forest. We have about 98, 99% of accuracy. And actually when we look at the features which are the most relevant for making decisions, we can see that we only need two sensors for this. One is the gyroscope and the other one is the accelerometer. With this information, we can actually predict that a crash happened, a collision happened, just from the action-reaction effect of the sensors, which is actually quite handy. And just to summarize, basically what we can get from the detection, we can get very high accuracy, 98.7%, but also we get 100% precision. What that means? It means that every time that our system says that a collision happened, it's true. There are no false positive. And this is very important because we don't want to have a false alarm for a collision because we will have a lot of things happening after that. So it's good to make sure that the collisions are actually uh, loyal to what is happening. So here we have the result about predicting the collisions. So these results were actually quite devastating because even if we were using several different classifiers and several different time frames or window frames for experiments, we can see that unfortunately we couldn't get an accuracy more than 30%. And this is actually very bad because we cannot distinguish between the different states of emergency, meaning that it's very difficult for the car to predict a collision. So you can imagine that this is actually something that happened to us. No? When we are driving, it's very difficult to know what the other driver is going to do. So that means that the human driver is quite unpredictable, at least from these perspectives. When we try to improve the best classifier that we have, what we were doing is just doing some parameter tuning, improving the system, putting the window time frame just to five seconds because it was one of the best results. 
and the best results that we were able to achieve were about 44%, which are still very limited compared with what we are actually expecting from an smart car to be able to do. Because we put a lot of expectations on this technology. We really want it to work better than human drivers. So if it is not able to react properly to a human driver, it is very, very limited for what it's supposed to do. So just to summarize, just to discuss a little bit, detection is okay. There are no problems with detecting when a collision is happening, but prediction is a, is a burden to our, to our system. So we really need to have ways to predict what a human driver is going to do. We really need to have ways to model them. So how do we do that? So let's think about the future work. We can actually try to profile the human that basically will give us like different kinds of humans, different behaviors. So what we are going to do is to think, okay, this human is more unpredictable than this other human, so I'm gonna be more cautious here. Secondly, we can even be more conservative and just predict whether the other driver is a human or not. I think this is something that is going to be easy to do because probably we will have something in the car just saying, this is a self-driven car or this is a normal car and with that it will be enough, but just in case it could be good to have like a system that predicts whether a human driver is a human or not. Third, we also want to add like an avoiding mechanism for the car. And last but not least, we want to add communication. So at least the cars can communicate between them. And also it would be good if they can communicate with the human driver to be able to avoid potential collisions. Okay, so that's it for today. Thanks a lot. And I hope you enjoyed the video.